And I want to kind of line up some of the similarities with the 2018 Raptors and the 23 Sixers. So both teams dealing with drama coming into the season. Both teams have Nick Nurse as a first-year head coach coming off disappointing playoff losses in the second round. And both teams start the year 8-1. and one, And the only loss to Milwaukee. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't well, know yeah, that. Okay. And that team, we know how that year ended. Yeah. With a ring. Yep. So... Do you see any similarities with that team and kind of the identity so far of this Sixers team? Certainly a lot of stuff at the beginning. I think you mentioned it. Um, you know, good team, semi-high expectations, but maybe not like, oh, championship thoughts really. I mean, nobody really thought of us as Toronto at that point as championship contenders. Not even really when the playoffs started did p- many people think of it. But the part you did mention, there was, there was a lot of – I call them raging fires. There was a lot of <laughs> raging fires burning. You know, we didn't, you know, we quiet. We didn't know if he was really going to play. He hadn't played in like 14 months. Um, Kyle, my man Kyle from Philly here, was he was mad at everybody because his buddy Demar got traded. I uh, was talking about changing the starting lineup a little bit, maybe bringing Serge off the bench, trying to insert Siako. So there was there was all kinds of uh, things going on there at the start, but. Very similar. Guys bought in and started playing really hard right at the beginning, and and a very talented team like this one, like this one. Yeah, I mean, it, it. Nobody is afraid to get creative on this team, and I think from day one, you really just came in and implemented a certain identity. I think, at least from the outside, so far, it's not even that the Sixers are winning games; it's how they're winning games. And I think what's taking people aback is that. They're so surprised at how polished it is. It, it looks like you've been here for three years already, implementing you know, certain tendencies and schemes. Like, how did you bring this team already to play the the way that they're playing? Like, everything is on point. You know, the off-ball cuts, hey, I ain't gonna lie ball we, movement. We've been working since, like, summer. We've been working since. He had you running, that, running like, suicides? Was, after June, <laughs> we've been working. We've been Rico Hines running through the same sets that we're doing now. So it's like the preparation – it's making a huge difference. I feel like just from being a player, I feel like, you know, it's make it easier to go out there and know what to do. How important was it to bring in Rico and, and some of these other guys that you're familiar with, bringing in your own staff? How important is that to you when going to a new team? Yeah, just a little bit about the staff is that um, these a lot of them I go back with in some form or another, right? Was, Rico was with me in Toronto. Ryan Gates and I coached together back in 99, 2000 in the old United States Basketball League. You probably never heard of that. <laughs> USBL, right? So I knew him from a long time ago. We won, we won, won a couple couple deals there. A um, couple guys played for me. Fab Flanoy played for me in England. Um, Terrell Harris and Terre Murray were on championship team at Rio Grande Valley. Doug West was my assistant on that team. Matt Browsey was my assistant. Yeah. Like all these guys, Kobe Carl won a, won a G League title. Ryan Gates won a D League title. Like, I really believe in guys that have put their time in and have won, like, like that, that can prove and figure it out how to win in maybe some obscure places. Um, kind of like you. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's part of it. I got to know all those guys coaching in some of these places. So they're winners, man, and they love the game, and, and they're, um, that's a great staff.